It was the last week of January 1945, and Operation Hannibal had just kicked off. Surrounded by almost two million Red Army soldiers, the Wehrmacht knew the German population in eastern Prussia would soon crumble under Stalin's iron grip, despite all their efforts. Even so, Admiral Karl Dönitz had a secret plan to rescue as many civilian and military personnel as possible from the Pomeranian coast. Against the biting waters of the Baltic and the implacable Soviet advance in the area, Dönitz committed the remainder of his Kriegsmarine fleet to a naval operation that would put Dunkirk to shame. Setback after setback. During the fall of 1944, the Wehrmacht was in full retreat across all the war theaters, especially the west and the east. The Allied forces had broken the invincible Atlantic Wall after the Normandy landings and had advanced into the heart of Germany, setting the stage for their defeat. With the Allies approaching from northern Italy and France in the west, Hitler's main concern was actually in the east, where the Red Army posed a threat beyond military matters. It was a humanitarian emergency. Almost simultaneously, the Soviet Union launched Operation Bagration to further disorient the German forces. The scale of the invasion was inconceivable. Almost two million men pushed forward into German-occupied territory with the ultimate goal of sending the Wehrmacht beyond the Danube. By now, German army groups north and center were in full retreat from Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and other regions. Following Hitler's policy of not giving up a single inch of ground, the retreating army group north was tasked with protecting East Prussia from the relentless Soviet advance. As such, the Third Reich troops retreated into a defensive pocket on the Courland Peninsula, where 33 divisions, comprising over 200,000 Germans and Latvians, were pressed to form a defensive position. The 200,000-strong garrison was everything that stood against 1.8 million Red Army soldiers, eager to ravage Prussia and its population. The Germans were quickly encircled, and their only way out was the sea. The Führer, unwilling to order a retreat, rebranded Army Group North as Army Group Courland and ordered its defenders to fight to the last man. East Prussian Offensive In early January of 1945, the situation worsened at the Eastern Front when the Soviets launched the East Prussian and East Pomeranian offensives with the sole purpose of taking over all of Prussia. Königsberg, the heart of the Prussian Empire and the medieval city edification of the Teutonic Knights became the primary target of the Soviet attacks, which began to be sieged as soon as the Soviets penetrated into Prussian territory. Aware of this, Propaganda Minister Joseph Goebbels assured the German population in Berlin that they would defend the capital to the last stone, like their brethren in Prussia. During one of his inspiring speeches, he exclaimed, quote, We cannot let Königsberg put us to shame. Nevertheless, the situation was ominous for the defenders at Königsberg. Seeking to further encircle them, the Soviet forces crossed the Oder River and cut off more German troops and civilians, eliminating any viable escape route by ground. Tens of thousands of civilians were starving, sick, and defenseless against the Red Army soldiers. One Red Army soldier wrote home, quote, Now our soldiers can see how German homes burn, how their families wander around, dragging their vipers brood with them. For them, there is no mercy. In response to these Soviet maneuvers that left thousands of soldiers and civilians encircled, Admiral Karl Dönitz initiated one impressive operation to rescue as many Germans as possible. In a twist of fate, the last significant German military operation of the entire war would not be the Ardennes Offensive of December of 1944, but Operation Hannibal on the shores of the Baltic Sea. Operation Hannibal Grand Admiral Dönitz made a desperate last effort, motivated not by humanity as much as the delusion to regroup his forces scattered in the east and continue the fight. The German high command still believed victory was achievable, or at least a peace agreement. Against the Führer's wishes, the Grand Admiral committed what was left of his fleet to evacuate German civilians and soldiers alike. However, Dernitz did clarify that, quote, Refugees can be evacuated by sea only insofar as this operation does not affect the transfer of fighting forces. On January 23rd, the Kriegsmarine leader ordered Rear Admiral Konrad Engelhardt, a seasoned merchant marine skipper 
and head of the Kriegsmarine's transport service to launch a Rettungsaktion, or rescue operation, under the codename Operation Hannibal. Even so, the Rear Admiral faced a formidable challenge in ferrying the troops and refugees west. Unlike Dunkirk back in 1940, the Kriegsmarine had nowhere near the Royal Navy's resources, and by 1945, its more humble fleet had already been eviscerated. The remaining ships were rusty and poorly maintained, and on top of mechanical failures, they suffered from both fuel shortages and a lack of experienced sailors who had been reallocated to fight on land. The Merchant Marine was also in terrible condition, while ocean liners with the capacity to carry thousands of people had not been to sea in years. Furthermore, the Allies had absolute air supremacy, the Baltic was filled with mines, and in the harsh winter, the ocean was plagued with ice. What's more, Soviet submarines were lurking around in search of easy prey. Mass Evacuations The German forces only controlled a small land corridor that stretched along the Baltic coast from Königsberg to Svinamunda, and it was just over 50 miles wide and under constant Soviet attacks. Desperate civilians would rally in search of any port where Kriegsmarine vessels could transfer them to safety. Engelhardt gathered between 500 and 1,000 vessels for the rescue operation, but hundreds were not military vessels at all. The rescue forces included landing craft, ferry boats, fishing trawlers, and passenger liners rallying at Palau, Svinamunda, and Gotenhafen. Moreover, the civilian vessels were not armed with any deck guns or military equipment in an effort to catalog them as hospital ships or civilian liners and fool the Soviets. Meanwhile, the drop-off point for the refugees would stretch from Svinamunda, Rugen Island, and Rugenwalde to the Bay of Mecklenburg and many other locations along the Pomeranian coast. However, most of these towns and ports were simply not prepared to receive thousands of starving Germans, given the secrecy of the operation. Under cover of night, the first evacuation finally set sail from Palau on January 28, 1945, carrying over a thousand wounded troops and some 2,000 civilians. At the same time, here forces continued to fight the Soviets to keep Palau open. Days later, a German counterattack was able to reopen the route from Königsberg to Palau and keep the flow of civilians and supplies. However, time was running out. Maritime Disaster On January 30th, the cruise ship Wilhelm Gustloff was called to aid in the crisis. Gustloff had been built to accommodate 1,463 passengers, but in the evacuation, she was crammed with well over 10,000 refugees, including thousands of children. Nursing her unreliable engines, the liner steamed slowly alongside her one escort, the ex-Norwegian torpedo boat Lova. But shortly past 9 p.m., the Soviet submarine S-13 slammed the passenger ship with three torpedoes, and she keeled over. It took her over an hour to sink, but she nonetheless dragged many lives with her. With such crowded conditions aboard, inadequate life-saving equipment, and the chilling water, not even 1,000 passengers survived the tragedy that became one of the worst maritime disasters in history. Over a week later, on February 9th, the General von Steuben liner was sailing with a cargo of thousands of refugees under the impression that they would have safe passage aboard an official hospital ship. But not a single transport during the entire operation had the Red Cross distinctive, which wouldn't have guaranteed the Soviets would hold fire. Steuben was also attacked and sunk by S-13. Indeed, the great liners were slow and vulnerable, but the desperate situation left Engelhardt with no choice but to continue using them. Some weeks later, Another massive tragedy with the Goya cruise ship claimed over three times the lives lost in the more famous Titanic incident. Regardless, the Kriegsmarine continued to ferry hundreds of thousands of people to the west. In the words of Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel, quote, the struggle continued to rescue as many Germans as possible from Bolshevization and slavery. Under pressure. Following the loss of SS General von Steuben, tragedy struck yet another vessel. On February 22nd, the Göttingen, carrying over 5,000 wounded men, was torpedoed by a Soviet submarine. Over 2,000 men went to the depths, never to be seen again. As the weeks passed, the Soviet pressure on the trapped German troops became grimmer. 
There was no way out for the fighting men, and the sea was not safe anymore. In early March, the liner Hamburg was sunk after hitting a minefield, and although it had successfully unloaded its thousand passengers, it was an irreparable loss that reduced the number of Germans that could be evacuated. Days later, the powerful cruiser Admiral Scheer and other destroyers provided valuable cover to small craft that rescued over 80,000 soldiers and civilians near Volin. Even so, the port of Kohlberg fell to the Soviets on March 18th, followed by Gottenhafen on March 26th and Danzig four days later. Fortunately, other craft were able to extract over 250,000 people from Danzig before it fell. Königsberg, the jewel of Prussia, then fell on April 9th after a terrible siege that destroyed more than 80% of the city. And Palau followed on April 25th, but German resistance in the Courland pocket finally succumbing on May 12th. One million. It is widely regarded that Operation Hannibal was the most significant evacuation in history, even more so than the better known effort at Dunkirk. Moreover, it was also the most successful operation conducted by the Third Reich in the latter stages of the war. Although crippled, the Kriegsmarine rose to the occasion. Over the course of 15 weeks, they evacuated 350,000 military and naval personnel, including high party officials and medics. Ultimately, the Navy saved up to 2 million Germans from internment or worse, but it couldn't save the many Germans in East Prussia. Even so, Dernitz was proud of the accomplishment, writing, quote, 99% of the refugees brought out by sea succeeded in arriving safely at ports on the Western Baltic. The percentage of refugees lost on the overland route was very much higher. About 200,000 people fled by land, but thousands perished along the way. In contrast, only 3% of those taken by ship didn't make it to safety. And despite the unspeakable tragedies of Gustloff, Stuben, and Goya, as well as several others, Operation Hannibal was a remarkable success. As Dr. Richard Selker wrote for Warfare History Network, quote, it was a credit not to Nazi ideology, but to old-fashioned classic German efficiency. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical and military content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.